Hey guys, what's up? Daniel here. Today we're taking a look at the new iPod Touch. Now this is the seventh generation iPod Touch that Apple recently released and it retails for $200. And with that you get 32 gigabytes of internal storage which is uh, you know, a little cheap of them to do and messed up, but uh, it's cool that we do get these six colors. So uh, today we have my favorite of the bunch, the silver one, and the box is basically the exact same thing as the previous iPod Touch. So we of course get the ear pods, a lightning cable, and an AC adapter. And of course the iPod itself, which is physically unchanged from the previous generation, which is a bit unfortunate since a bezel-less iPod would look really, really, really dang cool. And considering this iPod doesn't have Touch ID or Face ID, we could have just gotten a completely bezel-less iPod and just, you know, not gotten Touch ID or Face ID and stuck with the passcode and uh, it would have been, you know, full screen, which would have been cool. But maybe we'll get that in 2055. All jokes aside, this iPod still looks incredible. I've always loved the design and the colors that they choose for these iPods or all of Apple's iPods, really. The chamfered edges, the ring around the camera, everything just looks and feels amazing. I mean, the real changes that you get with the iPod Touch here are all inside since it now has an A10 Fusion chip, which is the same one that we have on the iPhone 7 and the entry model iPad that we have. So uh, yeah, it's a old chip, not a super fast chip but uh, enough to run pretty much everything on the App Store. This iPod also now comes with support for group FaceTime, AR apps, and of course, it'll get iOS 13 in the fall, which the other iPods won't. I mean, I have an old fifth gen iPod Touch and that one has become incredibly slow, almost to the point that it's just completely useless. I mean, it's still on iOS 9, and even that, you know, it, even if you just try to open something, it either takes forever to open or it just completely breaks down. So, I mean, straight up, if you have an iPod Touch, you love the iPod Touch line, and you just wanna see if you wanna upgrade an iPod Touch, this is definitely gonna be a more capable iPod Touch than your current iPod Touch. I think the biggest thing is that it's a little bit difficult to find a reason to get an iPod Touch in 2019, especially one that Apple doesn't seem to care to really update because this seems like they were forced to update it just so that it could run iOS 13 and their upcoming AR apps. I mean, what could say that, you know, you want this for music management and uh, yeah, that's, you know, all arguments are fair arguments. It's just that I feel there's better devices for music management. Uh, others could say that, you know, you could get this for gaming and again, there's better gaming devices for $200. You can even get an, a $200 Android device that would run some games better than this, or just get like an older iPhone for about $200 to $300 that is uh, used, and it'll be a heck of a lot more capable than this iPod. Of course, you won't get the nice design of this iPod, but if you're looking for functionality, those could definitely be an option. I personally wouldn't get this for really anything because for music, I do have an iPod Classic that I plan to upgrade to flash storage in the future, and I just really love whenever I want to experience some music using that little iPod Classic. It's just a really nice little thing. So I think there's better MP3 players, better iPods out there for music, and you wouldn't get all the bloatware that you get with the iPod Touch because there's a bunch of things you wouldn't need if you do need it for music. And for gaming, as an example, I ran some Fortnite on here and it does run smoothly. There's no lag or issues with it at all. Aside from the fact that everything looks incredibly jagged and you can kind of see it there, the main menu is all shrunken down so much that some of the text is actually just not really legible whatsoever. Then when you're an in-game, things are quite hard to see and it's just not a pleasing experience to the eyes to play a game that is fast moving like this with those jaggedy edges everywhere. So a game like Fortnite, you can run it, it's just not gonna be a fun way to play if you like playing that game. On the other hand, we have a game like Hearthstone, which is a nice slow game and everything runs super smoothly. There was no issues with it whatsoever. And I could actually see myself playing some Hearthstone on this device. And uh, you can see it there. Everything works perfectly. And you can, of course, just run pretty much every game from the App Store. I mean, pretty much this iPod can do everything that iOS offers, just nothing particularly great, but it can do it all, which is definitely nice. And as I mentioned earlier, this iPod now can run AR experiences, which is great because Apple's really focused on augmented reality. Even at WWDC, they just showed off Minecraft AR, which actually looks pretty dang cool. And uh, the few AR games that I tried on this, they ran perfectly without any problems, just like they would on my iPhone XS. There was just no issues with the tracking or anything. So AR works really well, and you are gonna have a good experience with that. I mean, we know that it has an older A10 chip, but overall it runs really fast in it. For a $200 device, it runs as it should. There's really no issues with it. It doesn't feel slow or like it's using old hardware at all. Of course, when I switched back to something like an iPhone XS, I noticed the huge speed difference, but 
Again, the iPhone XS is so much more expensive than the iPod Touch, so it makes sense that the iPod Touch is as fast as it is. I think one of my biggest complaints here is just that for me personally, it's a really hard device to hold. I mean, I grew up using smaller phones and as I grew up, I got larger phones, so I kind of grew into these larger phones. But uh, now I can't really hold these devices. These devices are really kind of designed for smaller hands or maybe you wanna put it somewhere, or for kids, these are perfect for kids, or people with just smaller hands. Again, this is very capable. On the back, we do have an eight megapixel camera with a 2.4 aperture, which takes some solid pictures, as you can see here. Things look sharp and crisp and really nice, and uh, in some cases, you'll, look, you'll take some pictures that don't even look like they were taken with an iPod Touch at all. And then the videos, which are at 1080p and 30 frames per second, also look very nice and vibrant and smooth. And uh, things look good. You can shoot some videos with this and things will come out looking very nice. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely an all around really nice little device that you can use for a lot of things. It's not incapable of doing things. It's definitely solid. You know, for $200, you do get a device that runs the iOS and it runs everything as it should, as you would expect it to. I mean, overall, it's a pretty standard spec update. I mean, it doesn't really bring anything new to Apple's iPod line. And uh, at $200, it's not badly priced. I think it's kind of solid. If it weren't for the fact that it comes with only 32 gigabytes of storage in the base model. And to bring that up a little bit, you have to go up to the next model or the next tier, which is $100 more. So that's gonna be $300 for the 128 gigabyte plus tax, depending on where you buy it. And then if you go up another $100 more, at $400, you'll get 256 gigabytes, which in that case, it's not worth it for this iPod. Even if you do get a lot of storage, $400 is, um, is it's quite an absurd amount to pay for this iPod. It's just, you're not getting that functionality out of it. You're paying more for space, but you're not really getting that capable of a device for $400. For $400, you can get really good devices nowadays. I mean, sure, they're not gonna be as small or as thin or as pretty as this iPod Touch, but they'll definitely be more capable if you're just looking for a certain feature set. So an older iPhone 8, an older iPhone 7, heck, an Android device, depending on what you need, you can definitely go for those instead of this here if um, 32 gigabytes isn't enough, because I think where this uh, device works is at that $200 price range. Anything more and you, you're kind of jumping into other device territory where uh, it just doesn't really make sense to get this because with tax plus a case, you end up spending a lot more. I mean, for me personally, I installed those couple games, just Hearthstone, Fortnite, and a couple of AR games, and then it took some pictures, some videos, and that was almost at the top. So that's not even counting a couple of movies for a road trip, things like that where a kid would use it or you know an adult, it doesn't really matter who gets this. Uh, it would fill up quite quickly. But yeah, that's obviously just my personal experience, my usage, how I would use it, what I think. Of course, if you like this device, you're not getting a bad device. It's a great little device. It'll be able to run iOS 13, which is great. The only cons here are really, depending on your hand size, it's gonna be hard to hold. And uh, it doesn't have Touch ID or Face ID, which is a little crazy in 2019, considering every device for a while now has had Touch ID or Face ID, so you still have to put the passcode or just remove that entirely to make it a little bit easier to use. I ended up, after some time removing it, because I put the passcode at the beginning, forgetting that it didn't have Touch ID, and then when I was filming this video, I had to keep entering the passcode, and it was super, super annoying. You actually do get used to Touch ID, so I had to just disable the passcode on it. And then lastly, you know, if you're fine with that price for that amount of storage, then uh, it's gonna be a really great device and it'll be very capable for what it does. And again, it's a very pretty looking device and it looks really nice. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, more specific ones, you can ask down below in the comments or you can reach out to me on Twitter at rmrdnl or on Instagram at the same handle and I'll get back to you there. If this video helped you in any way, please do leave a like. It helps the channel a ton. And uh, aside from that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.